Hello everybody. Uh, this is Jim Ransom with another weekly edition of Great Poetry. Today we will read the poems of two very different but excellent poets of whom I have said nothing really up until now. <clears throat> One is from the late 19th and early 20th century. The other is still living. His name is Wendell Berry, and he has written many poems as well as some novels and short stories. He farms 40 acres of land in Kentucky someplace, and at one time did it all with horses and aged equipment. I think it is fair to say that without his writings, he would have had a difficult time surviving in the modern world on a farm. <clears throat> but he's, a, he's an agro-environmentalist. He's, um, he's a believer in uh, the agricultural community as really uh, the focal point of stable life. And um, uh, I, think <clears throat> I think you'll enjoy Wendell Berry. He's written a lot of poems, as well as his other books. But first, we'll soften you up with a great poem by a British poet of the last century, John Maysfield. Um, let's go right off the top here. <clears throat> I must go down to the seas again, to the lonely sea in the sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the wind song and the white sails shaking and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied and all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls crying. I must go down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gull's way and the whale's way where the wind's like a whetted knife. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. That poem is called <clears throat> Sea Fever and um, it's an outstanding poem. But I have to tell you that John Maysfield, while he was a successful poet in his day, um, hasn't fared very well in the 21st century, or even the late 20th century. <clears throat> he, um, he never had a university education, and um, uh, it's hard to understand how he got so much good language uh, under his belt, but he did. Um, and he started as a seaman and in the early part of his life, he jumped ship in New York and began to write, eventually returning to England. How he escaped being caught for jumping ship, I do not know. His poetry led him uh, to several prizes. But his critics say he didn't write anything of note after about 2015. Sea Fever represents his best level of work. Now <clears throat> we'll turn to Wendell Berry. Wendell Berry is even older than I am, being born in 1934. He's still going. He's written novels such as Jaber Crow and Hannah Coulter. 
I haven't read either of those. Poetry has really been his big thing. With several books and many prizes. <clears throat> uh, the first one I'm going to read is <laughs> one that I probably should have read a long time ago. It's How to Be a Poet. Part one. <clears throat> Make a place to sit down. Sit down. Be quiet. You must depend upon affection, reading, knowledge, skill. More of each than you have. Inspiration, work, growing older, patience. For patience joins time to eternity. Any readers who like your poems doubt their judgment. <laughs> okay, part two. <clears throat> Breathe with unconditional breath, the unconditional air. Shun electric wire. Communicate slowly. Live a three-dimensional life. Stay away from screens. Stay away from anything that obscures the place it is in. There are no unsacred places. There are only sacred places and desecrated places. I've got to find the rest of this. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Accept what comes from silence. Make the best you can of it, of the little words that come out of the silence like prayers, prayed back to the one who prays. Make a poem that does not disturb the silence from which it came. <clears throat> Um, Wendell Berry had a complex view of life and of poetry, but he kept coming back to the farm. That was his true love. He started out teaching at a university, but he just didn't care for that. And that's when he, <clears throat> he went back to the farm and has lived there all of his life. Finally, there's another poem that I think is highly original by Wendell Berry um, that I'd like to read you <clears throat> because we're all familiar with table prayers, aren't we? Well, in a way, this is a table prayer, but we're, we've all been taught that table prayers uh, come before eating. But this is entitled Prayer After Eating. I have taken in the light that quickened eye and leaf. May my brain be bright with praise of what I eat in the brief blaze of motion and of thought. May I be worthy of my meat. <clears throat> it takes a poet to understand that perhaps praying would be just as good after we eat. Maybe it even makes more sense that way. That's it for this week. Next week's effort will be delayed by a day or two as we are going to be in Michigan for a family vacation. Uh, um, hopefully on the water. <clears throat> um, I'm not very good in the sun anymore. I've got old skin. I'm afraid that it will suddenly burst into flame in front of me. <laughs> and I really don't think that's a good idea. Um, so I might even be able to get in <clears throat> my second or third favorite um, thing to do. And that is go fishing. <laughs> I miss my fishing in Kansas. I really do. Um, 
and I had a lot of success there. But I haven't given Pennsylvania a chance yet. That's coming. But before I do that, I'm going to see how Michigan is. <laughs> Bye now and good luck. <clears throat>